webinar is to celebrate and revisit the 10th anniversary of Berset 2. Uh, Berset that was held on uh, the 9th of July 2011. So it has been 10 years, uh, 10 tahun sejak uh, peristiwa yang bersejarah itu. So today we have with us uh, Datuk Ambiga, uh, the Berset 2 chairperson at the time, uh, YB Maria, Thomas, uh, Dr. Wong Chin Huat, and also uh, Encik Zaid Kamerudin, who were with Berset Organizing Committee at the time. So, kita buat uh, event ni untuk mengenang kembali. Mengenang kembali apa yang berlaku pada hari itu. Dan juga to take us to revisit some of the key decisions and perhaps the inside stories or maybe the behind the scenes punya cerita lah kalau boleh sudi cerita. Okay. Uh, we will start by giving each uh, of our speaker um, a few minutes to give their opening remarks or maybe just a brief sharing on their reflection since, you know, it has been 10 years since the time, uh, you know, thinking back about that day, uh, how does that make you feel today? So maybe we'll start with uh, Dr. Ambiga. Thank you very much and salam bersi to everyone. Uh, I can't believe 10 years have passed. I don't feel 10 years older. Uh, I feel we still have some of the problems we were fighting against then. We still have them now. Um, but what I would say is I'd, I'd like to give credit to the first Berse. But I, I have to give credit to the first Berse, uh, which was a, a combination of uh, political parties and NGOs uh, who came up with this idea of fighting for clean and fair elections, because until then, no one thought about fighting for clean and fair elections. Um, and, and it is so fundamental, clean and fair elections, that I credit them for starting this movement. Uh, and I believe it was Sivarasa who came up with the name Berse, actually, for clean and fair elections. Uh, so credit to him for that. And, um, you know, 10 years later, everyone still knows Berse and Berse still plays such a leading role in, um, you know, in the democratic process. So I, I'm very proud of where Berse has come to. Uh, and I'm, uh, uh, I think it was needed at the time we, um, when we started Berse 2.0, it was a pure NGO movement. Uh, you know, the political parties were not involved uh, in the organization. So that's just uh, you know uh, preliminary remarks, and I think what really uh, took off was when we came up with our Bursi eight demands. I think when you focus people on what we are fighting for, and they're very clear about that, then you get the support that you needed. But I have to say, and I'll end with these words, which is, I never in a million years expected the kind of turnout that we got for Bursay 2.0. It was stunning. And it was Malaysians from all walks of life. Uh, and it was, it was a really a testament to the courage of the people who were prepared to come out on that day. So th those are just my preliminary remarks. Thank you, Abiga. So maybe next we can go with uh, Maria. Would you like to go next? Let me unmute. Salam Berse, Salam Sejahtera. Good evening, everyone. Thank you very much, uh, Kokhin, as the moderator. And uh, it's good to see that uh, we have more or less the same generation of uh, uh, Berse chair here with us, except maybe for Thomas, younger uh, <laughs> than us. Um, yeah, it's, it's just been uh, <clears throat> 10 years. But um, I feel that we have actually uh, achieved quite a lot besides uh, being branded as just a street demonstration. We have actually raised the awareness of what we mean by clean and fair election, people's participation, especially when we went down to the ground um, to actually talk about delineation, such a difficult uh, topic and uh, we made it 
we made it. It was a struggle <laughs> uh, with all the um, graphs and um, Google Maps uh, and, and so forth. But we made it. We made people understand. And we actually um, extended the, the, the struggle to lawyers. The lawyers came on board so fast, uh, got into the whole uh, topic so fast that it was amazing. We, um, I think we had something like 20 over challenges. I can't remember. Uh, but um, what really um, significant about Berse and the success is one, um, I must credit the committee uh, who has been together with us, focus. We were single-minded about what we wanted to do. Um, it's about corruption. It's about clean and fair elections, and it's also about the abuse of power. Um, we were we were um, breaking grounds on these uh, kind of issues, and um, and despite the attacks that we faced from the government, we never imagined yeah, that they would stoop so low to do that to us, but. Uh, I think that you know um, the committee stood together and that actually gave us the strength and the people support the people support was so amazing I mean um, I think uh, me and uh, Ambiga were actually uh, sharing a room in uh, Hilton and we just couldn't believe that we were actually going to have our first rally that was something that we have never organized before we didn't even know what to expect but uh, when we came down, it was, well, um, something of an experience where we were actually together, together with the people, even though we never actually reached the streets, yeah, Ambiga, uh, but we were together with the people and they didn't need leaders. That's the beauty of uh, Berse. They didn't need leaders. They just have to, we just have to say that, you know, we would like to do this and people took it on in their own stride. Um, they were creative. They came up with their own action. Um, and um, even though the first Berse rally, we were not there, they were able to take on the whole uh, demonstration. So I think that um, if, the people's movement and the people's power actually moved this country a lot. Um, and we contributed quite a bit to the change of government. Um, although there's a lot to say about that, <laughs> but I will keep it for later. Okay, thank you very much for initiating this. Thank you, Maria. Uh, okay, next we can have the current British chairperson, Thomas. Do you like to say a few words? Thank you, Kokin. Uh, good evening to everyone and uh, good evening to my fellow panelists, uh, Ambika, Maria, Zai, Chinwat. Uh, these are all my friends, you know. Um, you, maybe you may not uh, believe it, but uh, Berse 2 was my first time that I joined a street protest. I was such a goody goody citizen up to that point until you people came into my life, provoked me to come to the street. And I, th I think, you know, really, uh, I agree with Maria, what Maria said that it was um, the people, you know, the people were, were amazing. And, and I can say that from Berse 2, I was in 100% involved in and organized some of the protests. And I can always, always tell people, they say, wow, Bruce, you are so, so good at mobilizing people. I say, we didn't. The people mobilized themselves, you know, mobilized themselves. They knew what the Bruce was demanding for, was about. They knew the spirit that we wanted peaceful protests, you know. They, on their own, put on their yellow T-shirt, print their yellow T-shirt, organized their bus and they came in the thousands. But having said all that, I, I want to say, because I was a participant in Bursay too, you know, I was one of the whatever 50,000 that turned up uh, on that day. And uh, if it's not for the steering committee, the, the courage of the steering committee, then Ambiga, 
Maria Chinhua than the rest. You know, I think we would not have uh, dared to come up. And I think it should be reminded that at that time, Brasil too, the, the, the intimidation that was, that surrounded even just holding a peaceful protest in Malaysia at that time was so intense. KL was virtually under lockdown. Totally, we think, okay, now we have lockdown, it's common, you know, EMCO everywhere. <laughs> but at that time, you know, it's unheard of for a whole city to be locked down. And that was as close as it could be. And uh, I will tell my story later, how me and three other friends smuggled ourselves from JB uh, up into KL the night before and hid ourselves in the hotel room. And uh, I made sure that I didn't bring even my yellow underwear, just in case the police uh, searched my back. So that's how we came up to KL to join you guys uh, for the Brasse 2 rally. So that's all I want to say for now. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Thomas. Um, so to those of you who just joined us and the approximately 250 uh, audience on Facebook and Zoom, uh, welcome. This is a webinar to celebrate and revisit the memories of uh, Bersier 2 Ready, held 10 years ago in, uh, on this day, uh, 9 July 2011. Uh, before we move on to our next speaker, uh, I would like to briefly mention the an initiative currently launched by Bersier, which is uh, hashtag Bersier 709 an oral history campaign to collect and document the memories and experiences of the people who participated in the historic rally for clean and fair election. So uh, please do visit Bersier Facebook pages, Twitter, and uh, share your stories using the hashtag Kisa Bersier 709 or hashtag Bersier Stories 709. Uh, we look forward to receiving many of your stories, uh, the, ordinary, the stories from ordinary people. So uh, next, we have uh, Zaid Kamaruddin, who is a former uh, steering uh, committee member of Bersih. So Mr. Zaid, would you like to memberi sepatah dua kata? <laughs> yeah. okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam sejahtera dan salam bersih. Semua. <laughs> This is quite a memory actually. 2 p.m. 2 p.m. I happen to to find the the the, the, the t-shirt for for that first uh, bersih 2.1.0. Actually, it's very uh, memorable thing. Uh, we we had before few other uh, collaboration among CSOs. I was also involved in the anti-ISA movement and and also we also have some. Uh, show on the street and, and so on. But actually Bersi is very exceptional in the sense that it is a great, is a great breakthrough. Uh, number one, of course, even, even before the NGOs uh, took over, when it was actually led more by the political parties as well as all other organizations, it was also, I, I think at that time, one of the biggest uh, uh, demonstration on the, the street that, that happened there. But uh, after the election, some of them, uh, some of the political parties uh, in the state government and then so on. Therefore, uh, it was a very wise uh, decision by, uh, for, for them to decide to, to campaign for these uh, uh, changes in the in election. It should not be us because we are already part of the government, even though it's just a state government and, and, and so on. And the handover was done really very uh, uh, in itself is an uh, an event in PJ uh, where we was handed over to us the the NGO and uh, and we are we are not just uh, rushing through this uh, uh, the, this this campaign with uh, organizing the people on the street and then so on. I think a bigger <laughs> and uh, all the rest of us remember that actually among the first steps that we did is to engage with the SPRM, right? And then uh, they they give they they entertain us, they listen to us, and well, of course we did not expect uh, much even e e e even then. Eh? But then uh, but then nobody can and say that uh, we, uh, we, we, we ignore the peaceful, the so-called peaceful demonstration is so peaceful, uh, the proper way we should uh, engage and, and, and the sort. But then later, uh, we know the, how it developed, uh, we, we don't hear anything and, 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 and so on. 
and finally it was decided all this uh, it uh, tuntutan and then we decided to go to the street we organized it uh, as this t-shirt say 2 p.m <laughs> on the 9th of july and um, uh, it was uh, a breakthrough in in the sense versus is actually is supported not only in by malaysian in malaysia but also malaysian uh, as, well as, as well as other cso's uh, all all over the world uh, and then in terms of the composition also it was a, it is uh, something that uh, is shared by all ethnicities uh, the, the uh, parties basically probably the, the opposition then because we, we, we have the constant from uh, PKR as well as uh, PAS, uh, Masabu is always uh, in our dem demonstration. All, all religious uh, background as well in terms of the member organization and so on. I think this is something which is uh, good because it's a real, like I'm going to say, a real Ma Malaysian issue supported by the, none of the other CSOs who are against it or whoever who are against it can say that this is against Islam because you have a Islam movement there. And uh, against uh, the Malays because everybody is there. Uh, not including the Indians because they are also there. So even even by all the other factors that normally people use to divide us, they, they cannot do it for Berse. And the other interesting thing is that Berse has become a platform uh, for protests. Uh, uh, actually, everybody who came, because when, when we had the protest, many of the protests, I asked those who came, why do you come? They don't even know the Berse demand. But it is actually a platform to show their unhappiness. And this is the only way to to to, to do it. So uh, probably that, that, that one, uh, if you can uh, document it, uh, that, that, that would be good. Because they don't even know what, what Berse demand was. But then the, 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 because of that also, there's also something that we did uh, by the steering committee, that we control it, that we control, we make sure that no other banners, no other things, even though people may come for different reason and, and so on, they, they don't pull up their, their, their flag. It's always been the, 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 the control that we, we maintain throughout, which is already, already uh, is also uh, uh, quite a success. Uh, in, in the sense that in, in the end, it can be said that it is truly for the purpose that it was called, very responsibility, very responsibly uh, run, <laughs> even though some of them did not take off uh, and, uh, and, and say on as, as we planned. But then uh, uh, I, I think it managed to, to, um, uh, to give the message across uh, in, in the community. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Zaid. Terima kasih sangat. Okay, our last speaker, uh, probably the best dressed man of the night, uh, Dr. Wong Chin Huat. Dengan <laughs> headband dia semua. Dipersilahkan. Balik kampung lawat saudara mara. Kawan lama pun sudah berusia. Kalau kuning, semua saudara. Rera dibelasa kerana Malaysia. They lock down the city. But only to lock us into solidarity. They fire tear gases and water cannons at us, but only to crush our fear. We went to the streets for democracy, only to find the country. Now, 2011 was three years after the political tsunami in 2008, 42 years after 1969, the May 13 riot. But many Malaysians were still not free from the fear of an authoritarian government, of ethnic riots. And I think for some wonderful reasons, epic, that Bersi 2 on the streets of Kuala Lumpur on 9 of July 2011 transformed that. And really a lot of things is not organized. It just happened because a series of unintended consequences. And you know who was our biggest supporter? The Malaysian government and the Malaysian Royal Police. No one else but them. In that two months running up to July 9, about 100 people were arrested, including PSM 6. People were arrested for all kinds of stupid reasons 
for distributing national flags, for organizing Gotong Royong. Why? Gotong Royong means Berset. So they try to scare us. When that didn't work, they play the card of ethnic riot. So you have first Mr. Ibrahim. Um, sorry Ali. to interrupt, Jin Huat. Yeah. There's a technical problem. Our Facebook streaming has been stopped. Not sure if it's uh, intentional or deep state. Ke? But uh, Tekendalah, ambil iklan sebentar. Okay. Okay. So Can you think, go back a minute or so? We've uh, already started. Okay. okay. So, so we started again. again. Yep. Okay. Uh, so in the running up to Brasse, that two months, more than 100 people were arrested for all kinds of reasons, including PSM6. And you have people who, get, who got arrested for distributing the national flags. You have people got arrested for organizing Gotong Royong. Why Gotong Royong? Because it's Berse. So all these could work, send the government into paranoia. And when that arrest did not stop us, they started to play the card of ethnic riot. First, you have Mr. Ibrahim Ali who say, Saya cadangkan rakan-rakan Cina tinggal di rumah saja because we cannot guarantee anything that could happen. He called himself Panglima Perang. Then you have uh, Silat Lincha. Then you have Pemuda Amno, uh, led by the Oxford graduated chief. They all want to organize something, but it only had the opposite effect. I had students, Chinese students who say, exactly because of Ibrahim Ali, I'm going to the street because I'm going to tell them that I'm not going to be afraid. And both the police and us, we expected that to be a predominantly Malay affair. So they block a lot of Malay supporters. And at the same time, you have Chinese supporters coming from Pudu at the back. And what you see was very multi ethnic but this is the best part. And what I say, this is how I tell the story. Many of us cry two times on the street. First time because of tear gases. Second time because we were so moved. People that we do not know pass us Tower, water, salt. And remember, this was after 42 years of May 13. Many people still fear others who look different, who from different ethnic groups, different faith. But on that day, because of the police violence, we were made one. And that's why I say we went to the street for democracy, but we found a country. And I used to say that Malaysia... 2.0 was born on that day. I was damn wrong. Malaysia 2.0 was only conceived on that day. And you find that now we are full of darkness. You know why? Because Malaysia 2.0, the super sign baby, is still not born yet. We are still in the mother's womb. That's why it's full of darkness. But do not be despair. The baby will be born. Thank you. Well, we can see that uh, Chin Huat has become much more poetic in the past 10 years. Dah boleh jadi, nak on the way to uh, menggantikan Pak Samad sebagai sastrawan negara. <laughs> okay, uh, sorry for the technical problems earlier. We hope that uh, our Facebook viewers can continue to join this new stream. Um, okay, it's something that's very interesting that almost all of the Berse uh, leaders mentioned, which is that mungkin sekarang ni kita take for granted that, you know, um, banyak orang boleh protest uh, sebelum pandemic lah kan, you know, uh, whether it's by right-wing groups or by um, some liberal groups and so on. Tapi at the time, 10 years ago, you know, it was much more risky and organizers don't necessarily know what to expect, right? Uh, it's just something to keep us in that state of mind. Okay, so... Um, the event organizers have prepared a list of questions uh, and they actually have about 10 questions, but I think we may not be able to cover them all. So what I will do is I'll ask maybe one question to one speaker and then kalau nak chip in, feel free to chip in. Um, but you know, one question tak perlu semua jawab lah, just for the sake of time. And after we uh, answer the list of questions from the uh, event organizers, then kita akan terbuka kepada um, Zoom participants our journalist friends, NGOs, academics who might want to ask some questions. And we also collect some questions on Facebook, Facebook Live. So if you are watching this on Facebook, 
feel free to uh, leave comments and questions uh, and we will try to get to you. Okay, so the first question that was uh, being prepared, and I think this one perhaps uh, Ambiga will be best to answer this, which is, can you describe the process leading up to the decision to organize the rally? Like, okay, this is the take near, okay, kita nak buat BC2. And uh, maybe you can share with us your feelings at the time. Like just now you were saying you didn't know what to expect. So, yep, Ambiga, you can go ahead. Oh, you have to unmute. Uh, okay. Well, maybe I'm be okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now you will find out the real strength behind the Berse movement. It wasn't me. It was Maria. <laughs> if you want to know about organizing Berse too, she and Chin Huat are the ones you need to speak to. But <clears throat> let me start with this. It is they actually I blame because they are the ones who came to my office one day after. I finished as a bar council chair and, and said, will you lead this movement? And I said, yeah, why not? I mean, what's it's so it, it, nobody could possibly oppose clean and fair elections. And I wanted a peaceful life, okay, after being <laughs> president of the bar. So I said, yeah, no problem, I'll do that. So, uh, and I learned so much from them because I'm not, I was not an activist. I mean, uh, and, and I think, or everything I know about activism, I learned from them. Um, and I and there were many times when I was wondering whether we were doing the right thing, and they would be there saying, "No, we 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 carry on." And you know, this is the whole steering committee actually, Zaid and all included. So, so what I can tell you is, for me, it was a completely new experience. Uh, I you know, I, I was coming as a, a professional lawyer, and uh, of course, not that we hadn't done this before. Uh, lawyers also have marched. And, um, but this was a different ball game altogether. And I think what drove it was, um, it was post the Srawak state elections uh, and Maria and Chinwat can, can say a little bit more about that. And people were really angry. And I think this is key when you want to organize uh, any protest or movement, your timing has to be perfect. You need to read the ground. Let me tell you something. Timing now, very good, okay, for, <laughs> for protests. But you have to be able to read the ground and know the feelings of the people. And I think that's where all our supporting NGOs, you know, and we had so many, they had a feel for what was going on on the ground. We could all feel it. So we knew the timing was right. Um, because we were very angry about what was happening with the, uh, with the uh, we were very angry about what happened with the Sarawak state elections. And, and, and the problem with fighting for free and fair elections is, it's a very difficult topic to communicate to the people, because people are not really interested. When it comes to voting, they will just go vote and come back. No one thought about the system. And I think Maria has already made that point. So, so that was what uh, Bursay 2 was. And, and I will say this, that uh, Chin Huat says, you know, the government um, helped us. And I think they did. The government, the intimidation. In fact, after Bursay 2.0, I wanted to send them a thank you note. Because of that, more people turned out. It just made people so angry. And it made people wonder why they were so upset about the call for free and fair elections. Then people thought, ah, there must be something wrong with the elections. That's why they're coming down hard on us. So um, what the process, there was a lot of process where certainly where I was concerned, the steering committee met very often and, and they were really excellent. You know, they had cool heads, they're guiding and real guiding hand. And, um, and I know Chin Wat and Maria knew that I was not an activist, so not used to some of these things that were happening, but they were always there. And, um, and we made all our decisions together. And, and I think that's what it is, the strength of the steering committee uh, who, who pushed this forward. But more than that, the support of the people, the support of the NGOs. The NGOs were just marvelous. So, uh, and of course, also support of uh, the political parties who supported free and fair uh, elections. 
So I think I should ask Maria to talk about more about the process than me, actually. <laughs> thank you. Okay, I think that, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Ambika. So I think that's nicely uh, leads up to our next question. And Maria, feel free to add to what uh, Ambika said about the process. Uh, so in addition to that, about the process to have the protest, uh, we are wondering if you could share with us your experience on that day itself, 9, uh, 9 July 2011. Do you remember like, you know, uh, where were you the night before? Do you hide somewhere? And then the morning and the basurai, if you can recall. <laughs> Well, um, that night, me and Ambiga were actually at um, Hotel Hilton and uh, we were all ready to get arrested. So we brought our toothbrush, la, toothpaste, la, thinking that we could bring it to the jail. <laughs> um, but I think that um, the next day, uh, there was no, not much chance for us to actually join the crowd because the police were all ready for us. Uh, no matter how we ran uh, and tried to join the people, it was impossible. So that that's why we were guests, literally guests in that little in that little tunnel. And um, I just felt that you know they just wanted to kill us <laughs> really in that crack tunnel because um, you just couldn't breathe. Yeah, the smoke was so horrendous and all that. But I think that what is um, really important um, from that day onwards, it actually drew the community much closer. Um, uh, and we were very certain uh, that this is, this is how we want things to go. Yeah, uh, clean and fair election. I think we had like five things that we say, you know, keep it simple. Um, five things that we wanted to bring forward. Um, although even though we had five things, uh, people still couldn't quite remember it. But um, on that day itself, I think that, you know, um, the police um, and also the government at that time did an injustice to the people. They actually um, chased them into uh, hospitals uh, and bash them up and spray them, um, that was uncalled for. Lah. But I think that uh, it made people stronger. I remember when, um, Bursay 3, I was trying to get the people to actually move away because they started uh, spraying the um, tear gas. But the people were saying that, no, we wait for it to come. They were actually quite uh, quite um, excited that, you know, that they are going to be tear gas and not um, trying to run. Uh, whereas I am the one who is like trying to get them to run away. Uh, so, but I think that the bravery of the people actually showed. And as we went from street demonstration and perhaps also the clarity in our messaging, it actually gave a lot of courage to the people. And uh, we... Actually, to be honest, I really thank the people for actually trusting us that um, not all the time we are so clear, um, but uh, they actually trusted us. And whenever we um, call for any um, street demonstration, they were there. They were there with us. Okay, Ambiga, raise your hands. Very quick, add something? a little story only for this. Um, but the way I got to the Hilton Hotel, because obviously all eyes were on us, okay? And uh, yeah, you remember, right, Maria? So I actually got my bodyguard to take me on his motorbike, okay? I have never been on a motorbike before. <laughs> so there I was wearing my safety helmet on the back of a motorbike, heading to the Hilton Hotel. And that's how I got to the Hilton Hotel, snuck up in the lift and found myself uh, to where Maria was. And uh, so, and then the next day, as Maria said, we all got caught in the tunnel where they tear gassed, uh, 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 you know, they shot so much tear gas in there. I too thought I, I couldn't breathe. And and, and I, I, I thought we were all finished, actually. <laughs> so that's it. Chin <laughs> Huat, uh, your name was mentioned by Ambiga earlier. And we have a question here about strategy. So I guess uh, nicely dovetails into your area of expertise. So the question here is about um, how do you decide where to gather and where to march at you know so and so roads and uh, the what are the game plans on that day like uh, you guys to decide to basurai at certain time or you know were there debates about okay let's stay here until we get what we what we want 
what what are the debates and so on? Uh, I think what actually you want to go back was uh, at the beginning we want to march, and then Prime Minister Najib say no 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 you should not march. Uh, I think it was the king who say uh, the the His Majesty the King say uh, don't march. Uh, you know you should have it in in house uh, in in indoor. And then uh, Prime Minister Najib say yes. You know we we can allow you to shout from the morning to night as long as you are inside. Do not disrupt others. Then we say okay, that's good. Thank you so much. We want uh, Madaka Stadium deep in the town. And then they they turn back. And I still remember uh, Datu Ambiga, Pak Samad, and myself. We were called up on Thursday afternoon to to go to Bukit Aman to meet with uh, Tan Sri Ismail and then a whole lineup of senior uh, police officer on the other side. There's only three of us on this side. And I remember uh, Dato Ambiga give them a good lecture, like a law professor, and say someone in this room must have uh, the conscience and so on. Very very, you know, oratory. And they were just going around saying that you know we give you we give you Bukit Jalil we give you Kalana Jaya we keep on telling them no because this is so late you know if you give them a wrong uh, you change the the uh, the location now you're going to get more chaos uh, so what we want is that keep us in town because that we make sure everyone can disperse to public transport you have the LRT you have monorail everything they still don't want to listen to that so that was the part that i decided to say okay i'm going to speak like a little bit of a gangster i i told tansri ismail i say uh, sir you can extend your hospitality as hospitality on us that's fine meaning basically if you want to put that under i say go ahead uh, because we came on dato ambiga car I, I say we had had our toothbrush and toothpaste ready, but whatever happened, the rally is going to be on on Saturday. Nothing changed, and then after that, they just basically end the meeting soon after that because they know that they 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 couldn't persuade us to change our mind. And you know what's the most interesting thing? We left Bukit Aman within half an hour. The police call a press conference. And that's where they show they have actually got the court order to bar 92 of us from the downtown area near uh, Datara Medeka and so on. And amongst them, including the current chief executive officer Yap Su Singh, who was then working in Bangkok. You know why it was a 92? Because the police SB didn't do their work. They did not know that we actually have changed. They copied the whole list from Bursay One. So there's a fantastic story here. But the point here, if you have to deal with the police, be very calm, be very cool, be very polite, but you should be firm. You, If you don't get what I mean, watch movies like Godfather, Ransom, and so on. Okay. I guess the, so the plan was for Bersi 2 to have a march. Lah, huh? So that was pretty clear march on that day. And I guess it was the subsequent Bersi that, you know, it adopted other strategies, lah. you know, uh, the top and overnight and so on. So maybe we can go into that later. Uh, so we're looking at the questions from the audience. So uh, actually more comments than questions, but we'll take some of the questions. I uh, have Aru here. His question was actually directed to Ambiga, which is related to what Xinhua was talking about, actually. Okay, the comment is quite long, but basically he was asking about the meeting with the king, what happened, because uh, how come the police went on to get a court order against 92%, which Xinhua mentioned earlier, when Bersheh should be, you know, already have audience with the king and so on. So shouldn't it be, you know, given some uh, negotiating space to, and so on, yeah. Yes, no, we had a very, very good meeting with the king, actually. Uh, and uh, Zaid, you were there, and uh, uh, Pak Samad was there. And we basically uh, stated what it was we were looking for, and, um, and that the intention was just a peaceful protest, uh, and that we wanted to hand over a petition and so on. So, so it was a very, very good meeting. I think what Arul is asking is, look, and, and I believe that they were planning to arrest some of us before that meeting, but when the meeting happened, uh, they didn't. Um, so what Arul is saying is then why did they get this court order and, and, and so on and so forth? Well, I, I really 
can't understand what the thought process was. I think they were concerned that um, they, they must have known by then that Versailles was picking up, that, that really this time there was going to be a big turnout. So I, I suppose, uh, Arul, that's possibly why they, they you know, tried to stop the leaders actually from coming into the center of town. Uh, and where the reason we were staying at the Hilton actually is because the protests, we were going to go to uh, Central and then walk to the palace. Uh, and that's where we went downstairs and that's where we were caught in the tunnel. So I, I think um, that that's, that's the only reasoning I can think of, Arul, yeah. That, that in fact, they wanted to stop that rally nevertheless. Okay, so maybe Zaid, uh, since you were there, boleh tambah-tambah kalau uh, if you have anything to add. And also, actually, a follow-up question in addition to that, to Zaid, is um, so what do you think set Bersih apart from other protests in Malaysian history? Sebab Bersih 2 ni boleh katakan is very multi-ethnic and huge turnout from all different races and Prana NGO. And so maybe you can talk about, you know, uh, Prana NGO and, you know, how were the reaction from the different communities at that time? Hmm. Yeah, first, uh, I think the uh, the meeting at the palace, having audience with the king, is something uh, is an event in itself because uh, we, we we know even among activists, uh, some of us are quite averse to to uh, you know to to be taking or making that step. But uh, I think the one of the other thing that probably is not is not mentioned is the fact that uh, we have audience with the king and then we are not even a registered organization. I think that that is something uh, something in itself. I was wondering until until now why and <laughs> that one happened. Uh, because uh, if uh, I, I think even if, if he, he was if the government was consulted, definitely they, they, they would not have allowed that. So uh, we just keep it uh, at that in regards to to, uh, to our audience at the, the palace. But I think it has the effect uh, uh, that Ambiga mentioned uh, just now, because now it is another another element to, to, to it that probably people cannot uh, already use those people may, may want to, to say that this is against the king or the what, whatever of the protest now they, they can that that is already taken taken away from from them so that is something uh, the I, I think uh, the, the other thing that I want to to, to to mention what we learned is actually this is truly <coughs> the demands are actually uh, is so logical. It's already there in in uh, in the in the system. Nobody wants to to have uh, an unfair election or a election that is bad. So this is you you, you cannot have a, a motive which is uh, that strong in terms of the na national significance as to to have your leaders or uh, those who are going to represent you. Uh, to making the policies and uh, of the country and so on that they be elected in the way that is that the Berse demanded. That is why actually, uh, if we fast forward this uh, this thing, you, you, uh, I think I can mention this, but uh, we we take it inshallah, inshallah in a good uh, in good spirit because when we met the SPR, of course they say a lot of things they don't really listen to us even though they do it. But but later, I think one of the person who was in the meeting that we see even later, later many many years later, even promoted and considered to have a proportional representation for for for, for Malaysia as a reform. You see, you see what that shows that actually our, our demand is very log logical, and because uh, it is uh, logical uh, in another circumstances, any thinking man will, will think this is uh, something that is supportable. This is something which is very good. And uh, by that time, during that time, even we have uh, pa uh, pa uh, political parties, even though mainly mainly from the opposition was supporting it. So this, uh, we found an issue that everybody can can unite uh, the, the the whole of the of the nation. Other issues probably will will be some some people who are disagreeing with it and and, and so on. But this cause is something that is uh, very supportable by everybody because it's so logical, it is there in the law, this is what we want and, and, and so on. 
I think the, 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 the other bad product is that actually we as NGOs as well, this carry, carry, carry on later. It taught us that there are a lot of things just beside this very uh, this election things that actually we, we we share the common interests the same objectives and and, and so on but uh, we, we did not have the chance to actually work together with it i think this uh, you, you can see the after effect of Berse and and so on the the the, the fact that many many uh, CSOs come and work together one one model that I can say is GBM because what we from all the representatives uh, of the community we say what are the things that we agree on uh, to make Malaysia better you see because uh, I think uh, this is uh, uh, also the byproduct of uh, Berse where you found an issue that everybody, it is in the interest of everybody. Now we can actually uh, unite or work together for, for three things that we are interested in that is uh, important to the, the, the Malaysian working together from the various ethnicities, various ideologies, various uh, religion even. Mm. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Charles Zaid. I think it was a uh, you know, very good remark covering a lot of things the importance of having common agenda yang boleh semua community different community with different interests tapi boleh unite on these uh, eight common demands right okay we have a few questions here and i'm just gonna group two questions uh, that i feel is quite similar and uh, perhaps thomas the current budget chairman should be best to answer this uh, so basically we have question from azira and also henry and suming which is do you think there will be another budget in the future once we achieve herd immunity in Malaysia. Uh, okay, the other question which is quite similar is with the current turmoil rakyat are suffering, what are some of the things we can do collectively again uh, to become a progressive nation? So, Thomas. Thank you. Um, okay. Will there be another bursa? You know, that, that was, I think, the first question that was asked to me uh, when I was... Uh, elected as the Brussels chair after G14 uh, by the reporter, will there be a, another Brussels rally? And I think that is understandable because I think one of the biggest success of uh, Brussels over the years, thanks to the leadership before us uh, uh, right now, is, is the, the turnout at the rally. I think it's not, not, not just a protest, but I think the rally broke through many, many grounds. You know, it, I think not only did it create awareness among the population of electoral issue, which normally, you know, it's not the most exciting issue, uh, voting, but I think just the, the idea of clean and fair election. Uh, and uh, then people begin to wonder and look closely at the electoral process. And I think that riled them up because none of us like to be cheated. You know, we don't mind losing. We don't mind losing. Our party didn't win, but nobody liked to be cheated. I think like Zai said, that is one message that could bring people together, clean and fair election. And I was uh, one of those people, you know, that, uh, uh, well, I mean, a bit of background before I joined this first protest, Brazil too was that more than a year before that, I was involved in registering voters, new voters. And in that process of registering new voters, I start learning and finding out how voters were suppressed. The process of trying to register to be a voter in Malaysia is like, you know, I mean, like getting ready for Olympic or whatever, you could go through many hurdles for some people. And then the, the issue of gerrymandering also, I was beginning to look at it closely. I realized that elections in Malaysia wasn't free and fair. And that was what uh, spurred me and the Brussels leadership basically uh, pointed the way. And, uh, and so for me, coming out to the protest was just a natural thing to do. You know, I, I never felt that I was doing anything wrong because it is our fundamental right under our federal constitution to assemble uh, peacefully. 
without arms. And when I came up, when I answered the reporter, I say that day uh, when I took on the chair, I say protest is never off the table. It is always on the table because when people want to express themselves peacefully, this is only our constitutional right, but this is also democracy in action. So I would say that, uh, you know, Bruce is an organization today, still very much committed to democracy. And uh, yes, like Ambiga said just now, you know, sometimes people give us too much credit in Brussels. They think that uh, we just uh, show a, a, a date, you know, 100,000 will come out, you know, but it is all about timing, you know. And, and I, I like to use this analogy of uh, a windsurfer, you know, uh, at the beach, who is always ready with a surfboard but looking out for the next big wave, looking out for the wave. Is that the one? Is that the one? And I, I, I was with Maria, you know, to uh, Brussels 4 and 5. And uh, I knew how we agonized, you know, over the timing, you know, among other things. Agonize over the time. Is this the right time? And sometimes we know it's the right time, but yet we agonize over what would it mean for people? Would it, how would the, the, the authority react? Would they react violently? People will get hurt, will get killed or whatever. So, but the timing, uh, I would say to the question, um, I think COVID has, uh, of course, is a major consideration, but it is not the only consideration when it comes to organizing a protest. I think there are many other factors that we have to, to look at to determine whether this is the right timing. Um, I think the, the, the situation in Malaysia right now is, is, uh, is more complicated. The issues in politics is no longer free and fair election. We are talking about elected members of parliament hopping from one party to another, creating collapse of the federal government and um, identifying uh, that issue is easy, but uh, picking the timing, I think is something that uh, it is an art in itself. And uh, this is where though protest is not off the table, but I think we are looking closely, what is the red line? I think there are several po po possible red line. Uh, parliament itself has been suspended. Now we are talking about opening, but we, we do not know how sincere the government is when it comes to opening the parliament, uh, or is this going to be a, a mock, a, a show of an opening? So all these are things that we are looking for. And I think the other question, big question that was asked uh, on Facebook also is that, um, you know, after working so hard through so many protests and uh, many have credited the movement, people's movement uh, that Brise led to the change in government, then only to see that government topple after 22 months. Uh, you know, is it worth it? I say absolutely, this is still our country. You know, I mean, Chin Wat used the analogy of uh, Versailles 2 was the conception of Malaysia 2.0. But we are not there yet. We are far from there. You know, to think that one election uh, three years ago is going to give us a new Malaysia, I think we are fooling ourselves. But we need to continue to push on. Uh, they are pushed back by forces that do doesn't want to see uh, the new Malaysia but we have to continue to push on. And I think what Brasse has been doing has been to identify in the last one and a half years, all the areas that the weak political weakness that caused 
the party hopping, the incentives that, that allow people to hop without prohibition. And uh, these are the advocacy, these are the reforms that we are pushing for uh, to make sure that uh, when this reform are in place, this sort of uh, things do not take place uh, mm -hmm. uh, so easily. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks so much, Thomas. Uh, you know, as a researcher, I find it very interesting what Thomas said, based, uh, which is basically touching about the evolution of the about the role of Bersi, right? You know, uh, if Dulu primarily uh, for organizing a rally, now it has evolved to so much more. Uh, you know, you guys have engaged with the uh, and be part of the electoral reform committee, right? So basically, now you have access to negotiate real changes and so on. So maybe uh, we can touch a little bit on that. Uh, but for now, it's almost 9.30. Uh, I would like to thank all the audience for staying with us so far, about 200 of them. Uh, we'll try to end by 10 o'clock if that's okay. And, and actually, after that, 10 o'clock at Clubhouse, there'll be another session which involve uh, more younger Bursi participants, uh, such as Adam Ali and so on. So we will, uh, uh, some of us will be there. Uh, feel free to join us if you have Clubhouse. It's also on Android now, by the way. Um, so that's a little bit of announcement. Okay, so to bring it back to, I'm sure a lot of people have questions about the role of Bursi today, right? Especially after Sheraton, GE14, and the current government uh, failing and so on. Therapy, I want to bring it back to 709, right? Because this is about 10 years after the Basic 2 rally on uh, 9th of July, 2011. And uh, maybe this question can be directed to uh, Maria and Ambiga. But of course, Zayed, Chinhua, Thomas, if you have any inputs on this, uh, please feel free to jump in, which is basically about the encounter with police. I think this forms a very important part of people's memory on that day, right? Their encounter with the police. So basically, um, do you remember what triggered the violence from police? Like, were there negotiation and then the negotiation breakdown? Or were there just attack without any apa nama, uh, warning and sebagainya? And uh, were there any legal actions well, whether taken against uh, you guys as the organizer after their rally? Or uh, have there been any redress of, uh, against the police who committed and beaten up you know, protesters and so on? Maria, go ahead, Maria. Oh, I thought you were going to answer. <laughs> uh, were there any negotiation? I don't think we had time to negotiate. They just shot at us, that's all. Uh, when we entered into the tunnel, um, no negotiation, that was the first thing. But uh, looking back yeah, uh, at Percy, I think that um, maybe maybe there are other players now that have come in yeah that we also need to uh, look into uh, and maybe uh, and perhaps person needs to uh, rethink yeah I, um, what do my what do i mean by other players i mean if you look at um, the the anak muda who actually did the sit in at the parliament um, that was a protest against the uh, darurat I mean, um, that, that is something very significant. That is also, it can also spark a people's movement. So it's not like, um, it's not static that it would always be per se. I think that there are other players that have come in and we need to actually support. I feel we need to really support some of these uh, people's movement um, that uh, they have actually taken leadership um, to to uh, in response to a failed system, uh, failed in the sense that you know uh, where it has actually uh, undermined the whole electoral system, the whole parliamentary democracy, um, and built a government based on that. And uh, and young people are actually responding to that. It could be the um, the sit in at the parliament. It could be also even um, some of these black flags, white uh, white flag is of course uh, something else, but black flags that actually came up. Um, there's a Fami Reza's a protest and all that. So you're seeing, yeah, um, small but um, increasingly people are speaking up. 
we may not be able to have another street demonstration but we can actually use other forms of protest because um i think that you know um the present situation is that uh we need to give people hope that there is this other system that we can actually build on and um and to show that you know Oh, we we can actually still uh, bring back the free and fair elections. The we still can be uh, we can still can bring back parliamentary democracy, uh, and um, and that there is still chance of um, maybe other people leading a movement. So we we need to be uh, in a situation where we have to be supportive too, of that kind of uh, uh, movement that may come up. Um, besides Bersay, of course. Everyone uh, thinks about Bersay and all that, but, well, there are many, many players now, and uh, we need to... This is not a, uh, an issue that can be resolved uh, on its own, but it has to have a united um, um, cooperation amongst the NGOs, amongst individuals, amongst... Um, even political parties, yeah, to actually uh, re-look at what this system is doing to us. Besides, of course, you know, um, the democracy, it is also this whole uh, health issue. The health issue is already something that makes me boil. Uh, and I really feel like, you know, it's time that, you know, we have a massive uh, um, a protest against the uh, health system, but perhaps that is something not um, not not something that you know Berse wants to get into. But you know, uh, you, you're looking at the figures and all that. We are actually um, calling an emergency and not resolving the health issue. Yeah. So um, this is something that we need to really think about uh, if we want to move forward. We have to work with other forces. And perhaps review the agenda of per se. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mara. Um, Ambiga, you raise your hand just now. Would you like to add? Just a quick one. Um, one thing we must never forget is that uh, peaceful assembly is a constitutional right. Uh, it is something we, because between elections, there are only a few ways in which people can show that they're unhappy about the situation. So they, you, we must never hesitate to go to the streets peacefully okay so uh i still think that that is a right that we must continue to exercise and we shouldn't be and of course now there are many players as maria says which is very good and we should support them i just have a few more things to say maybe a little bit off topic but let me please allow me this um there that bursi was not just about the uh, uh just the bursi movement okay it created several other movements one is the emergence of global Bursae. Now that was an amazing, uh, 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 amazing thing that happened there. So uh, after Bursae 2, uh, and in fact, during Bursae 2, it happened, started in Bursae 2, and we have some very good friends all over the world. In fact, you can go to any city and say, is there a Bursae <laughs> rep here? And you would have a friend. Now, um, so now we have, when, when there is a Bursae rally, it starts in Australia, okay, first. And then it moves around the world. And there, there, those are amazing uh, uh, things. That, that is Malaysians around the world, okay? That's one. Number two, before the last elections, we literally had an Undi 18 movement, a movement to bring people home to vote, a movement to bring votes back. Uh, that was another movement in itself. Thirdly, we had the Pacha movement, which is the, uh, uh, you know, uh, who, who's uh, basically the watchdogs for the elections. Training sessions were going on. What was happening in the last election? These are all offshoots of, of what happened in Bursi, you know? And, and I want to say, talk about them because we must commend them. Uh, the kind of things that, the offshoots that came from Bursi was unbelievable. So I still think Bursi has that role, okay? Uh, there are other movements as well, good. But Bursae is still a very important pro-democratic uh, uh, movement. Now, I also want to say that the other factor that we mustn't forget is the police did improve. 
over time, they were not very good in the uh, birthday two and birthday three. They were beating up people and tear gas and all that. There were two Suhakam inquiries into the role of the police. And after that, you actually saw a vast improvement in the police handling of Bursi. So, uh, you know, when Maria did uh, Bursi 4 and so on. But don't forget, huh? Maria was arrested under SOSMA. All right. What year was that, uh, Maria? Maria can tell you about that. Uh, and, and that was before Bursi 4. Was it Bursi 4? Bursi 5? 5. No. 5. 5. 5. Bursi 5 under SOSMA. So, you see, this oppression doesn't stop, okay? It doesn't stop. And that's why we still need to fight the system. So, and, and I just also want to mention Tun Badawi when, when uh, at Bursi 2, uh, he did have a meeting with me and so on and so forth and actually uh, helped and was very understanding and facilitated uh, the meeting with uh, the king. So, uh, you know, the, we, were, we were very grateful to him at that time for doing that. Thank you. Okay, uh, we just have one question uh, about two questions actually from about East Malaysian involvement. Uh, so basically, if I were to rephrase both questions into one, uh, could you talk about the Pranan about yeah, East Malaysians in Berse and maybe uh, whether Berse hanya limited to peninsula ataupun do you guys try to make effort to, you know, uh, include more people in uh, the Sabara and Sarawak region? So um, maybe Maria, would you like to take that? I think that uh, we try to include uh, Sabah and Sarawak. The initial one was uh, really, to be honest, the initial one when we formed the committee, nobody was were interested to join us. So whoever came from the meeting, we just support everybody in. So it didn't include um, Sabah, Sarawak, if I'm not mistaken. But along the way, as we were organizing, I think we started pulling them in as a committee member. So that's why um, our committee came up to be about 17 people, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, or like, if you can remember, we had a massive uh, committee. We, we started at about 11 or 13. And then okay. it keep on expanded after the say two at one point reached to about twenty something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I I think that uh we try in a way to include uh, Sabah Sarawak and then later on um we even have uh staff in uh, Sabah, Sarawak we had some uh we had contacts we actually uh, identify people who were able to uh, bring our agenda. Uh, it hasn't always been easy because um, it's still quite uh, peninsula oriented that we won't deny. But um, what I like about Berse is that we try to make efforts to go to Sabah. We, we make efforts to go to Sarawak. And thank goodness we had enough financial support from the public. Nothing came from the government. All the funds um, that Berse had were actually from the public. And using that kind of money uh, it enabled us to travel uh, and to reach out to um, um, Sabah and Sarawak and also e even in the peninsula. But um, whether it, uh, they are part of it or not, to be honest, uh, you can only be part of a movement if you try to own it, if you own it. And you can only own it by being uh, involved in the movement we can we can offer you something but if you don't want to bite um, nobody can uh, um, force you to actually bite it so i think that you know uh, we we try to reach out to um, as many people and it's not just about sabah sarawak we also were not very um, uh, we don't have people from the east coast uh, up north, we were still struggling to get people to come in. So it's not just about East Malaysia. But uh, one thing about Bursi is that once we, um, if I'm not mistaken, when we did Bursi 3, we tried to diversify. Um, if I remember, Penang had their own um, demonstration. I think we hit about seven states. 
Uh, and Johor, yes, <laughs> I see. <laughs> Thomas, Johor, Penang, uh, Para. Um, I, I can't remember. I think so many people were having their own birthday rally, and uh, it was so amazing. Besides just the global birthday, that internally it has spread out to other states. So um, it is really taking ownership of birthday because birthday doesn't belong to the committee. But it is a people's movement. It belongs to the people. Mm. If I may so much. also jump in on that. Mm -hmm. I think I uh, fully agree with what Maria said. For Sabah and Sarawak, we, we in, in, in our structure, we have a vice chair for Sabah and vice chair for Sarawak. For Peninsula, we don't have that position under this steering committee. So, and over the years, I think um, during Maria's uh, time onward, uh, we I think made many, many trips. I know I made together with Jin Huat uh, over the redelineation uh, issue to go to the interior of Sabah and Sarawak to try to help people to understand uh, their role in objecting to the upcoming redelineation exercise by SPR. And I think we, on in our road trips, we have met many, many people. And I think we always try to uh, convince them that uh, electoral reform, it is not just a West Malaysian thing, but it is uh, an issue that that uh, East Malaysia need to take it up. Because if you want to, to have more autonomy even uh, in, in, in the region of Sabah and Sarawak, you got to make sure that the process of electing your leaders are free and fair. Otherwise, you're going to have a, another big issue where people can be fraudulently elected and uh, rule over you without proper check and balances. So. Um, it is definitely uh, 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 we we make the effort there, but also I want to say something. This this is jumping ahead to verse three, uh, taking up Maria's point that we open up uh, during verse three especially uh, we open up to other states. In fact, how I came into this picture, this whole thing was because I was in Johor, and a bunch of girls felt that. Uh, we should organize something in Joe Baru. And overnight, somebody connected me to Ambiga. And for the first time, I spoke to this icon of democracy. And really, I mean, I was in awe, you know. And, and, and you know, but the words of Ambiga were so reassuring, you know, that, uh, you know, if, if you guys uh, believe that you want to organize it, we are with you 100%. 100%, you know, and, uh, but if you decided not to, and you're going to come up, we welcome you, you know, but we support you if you want to do it. I think that is the way we are still to today. And it is so true. You know, our of Brise, many, many other movement has sprung forth that we can't even claim credit that we initiated it, we instigated it. But just people were inspired. And I think this is the Malaysia we want to see, where we see many, many young people, huh? the different movements that are coming up, uh, taking up the challenge to speak up on different issues. Uh, you know, Brussels is not the only one that can organize protests, and we shouldn't be. But I want to say Brussels will always be in solidarity with anyone who wants to organize peaceful protests to push for democracy, we will be in solidarity. Not only that, we will lend whatever support we have and also experience if there's any in organizing protests for people. But that doesn't mean that we will not do it, you know. But uh, we are encouraged by the Black Flag uh, movement and the Anak Muda and things like that. And I think uh, we want to see that springing up all over Malaysia because this is the right of 
Malaysians in a democracy because, uh, and, and it is the job of the police to facilitate peaceful protests. Okay. Oh, uh, Shai, raise your hand. Would you like to say something? Oh, I say mute. Ah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, as, as we are coming to the, uh, I think the end of our discussion, I think it's very important, like what uh, Thomas uh, mentioned just now. Uh, not not just. There are still a lot of to, to struggle for in terms of uh, election, electoral reform and so on, which uh, Berse need to or we shall, shall continue. But even though uh, maybe Berse cannot claim it, but I, I, actually I can say that many many of the offshoots, what uh, Berse uh, kicked off, you know, those are also very important things. What are the lessons that we learn and, uh, and, 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 and so on. And then, of course, the, there are also other, other changes in, uh, in the political as well as in the CSOs and, uh, and, and, and so on. Because uh, one of those things, uh, when, we were, when I was in, in Marseille, we, we know, uh, even though we, we have all those great demonstrations, very peaceful, and so many people well represented, but it is not uh, creating the, 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 the changes because in the end, is those who are in authority or the, the, the government. And then uh, I, I think in the, in the last election, the... We, the sorry, sorry. we dropped out again on live. I don't know what happened. I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's recorded any, anyway. It's, it's okay we continue. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it's recorded. So we can edit the video. Mm. Actually, Berset taught us what we, the, we, we fought on the same issue. Right, that we won, and then okay. the, the last election we, we found a way of what we fought on the things that you disagree. Everybody disagree with, and then we have a change in in, in government. That is the, the the other way that the things uh, work. But then then again, we we know the political reform and and, and so on. Uh, yes, is there, but it has not improved much because then. Then he was taken away from the people with the Sheraton move and, and all that, right? But for, for a short time, it taught us the changes that we shouted for. So thousands thousand of people came, came out in the street. Actually, if you change the government, they put the right people there, then you, you, you have that, that changes. <laughs> you, you, can, you can have that change. So, of course, realistically, in a democratic society, those, those in power and what they stood for, is, is something some, something that is also very very important. Even though it, it looks like not connected to to Bersi, but these are the, the, the things that uh, I think it can find its roots uh, during during those time how people work together and, uh, and, and 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 so on. I think the the other thing that you also taught, taught us like uh, we, we we have in Bersi all those sincere people who fought. Uh, who contributed uh, not to get back anything and so on. I think that is the, the, the other lessons that uh, the world need to learn is to put the right people, the, that sort of people in, in, in politics. And uh, of course, in, in, in the, the, the government. We thought that we changed the government with, uh, when the government changed, then we have the good people, but then it proved that actually this uh, issue of putting the, the, the good people who don't jump ship and and and, and so on? Who sto who really stand for principles and do it uh, without any any personal uh, remuneration or whatever? Those are things that 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 continue. And uh, I can say that actually, uh, Berse have got a part in uh, in in all this, whether it's so so called failure or also the the, the successes that uh, that it cre created. So this is uh, important, not only what Bersih has, but also what it has spun off, as well as what it taught the, the people and continue to teach the people. I hope uh, Bersih will continue, even though in, uh, in, in maybe in electoral reform and, and so on, but I'm sure that the people who was involved in Bersih and then gone into other fields will, will continue to do good to our society and community. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Zaid. Uh, what you say was very important. I remember reading about the literature on social movement studies. Basically, they were talking about the social movement 
you will impact you for life, right? And then the activists that were involved at the time, not necessarily you organize it, even participant, you carry on in their life, impact their everyday life and so on. Uh, okay, I'm so sorry uh, for the technical issues that we had. And uh, now we are live again on Facebook. Hopefully we can post the recording uh, uninterrupted uh, in short, or in short videos. Uh, we only have time uh, about five to 10 minutes left. So let's do a quick round of uh, perhaps a wrap, wrap up closing remark from every, everyone uh, in reverse order of how we began. Uh, so maybe about two minutes each. So let's start with uh, Chin Huat. Thank you so much, Kokin. I want to make two points. The first point is that Bursay is a DIY project that is shaped by people who, who take part in it. And uh, East Malaysian contributions were perhaps less observed, obvious, than what people notice. Uh, let me give you a very clear example. In Bursay 1, when we talk about uh, poster wood, what we want is to do away poster wood because everyone only think about poster wood for police and soldiers and so on. But with the process uh, leading to Bursay 2 and so on, we went to Sarawak and that's where we realized and said, no, we need to expand poster wood because that you have people who work outside the region, they shouldn't fly back. And today you look at our demand, expanding poster absentee voting is a key demand. That's really something that how East Malaysia and enrich us, even though you don't see them leading the rally in 709, we, so we must see beyond that. And thank you so much, East Malaysia. You make Berse much more Malaysians than they could be. Now, second point I want to draw, and always is very, uh, I'm very cautious of this, that I humbly think that Bursa is a catalyst, is a vehicle of the circum, the larger circumstance around us, the historical juncture around us. Not so much that we change everything. So if you look at it from Bursa two all the way to Bursa five, what was the background? Or at least up to Bursa four, what was the background? The background was actually a two-party system that bring largely the country move to the center, even though you have right-wing groups who try to pull us apart. And that provides us that uh, momentum that people feel that why uh, we, can, we can bridge the difference over ethnicities, religion, language, region, and so on. Because there was a, a, a very positive imaginary and Bursi became the convenient vehicle towards that destiny. And, and today you're asking what we are we doing about here? Should we go and rally? I think I need to put that in perspective. Sheraton move basically kill our innocent. The country has never been more fragmented before. What's the solution? The solution is not going for unity. Democracy is premised on productive and healthy division. And today our problem is that parties are so toxic in their division. So what you see Bursay now is playing that role, bringing different parties, even uh, from Basat, uh, from Amno to PAS, we try to get Basatu as well. We try to get everyone in the same room to talk about solution because that's the only way we can go forward. We need to build this. It's not about unity. It's about building healthy and productive competition because that's what democracy is. And we'll continue to fight on. When the time is right, we, if we have to be at the street, we will go to the street. But we are looking for solution, not just for applause. Thank you. Jinghui, someone remarked that you look like you are dialing in from the streets, like you know, live foreign correspondent. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, Shadara Jai, closing remarks. If you have two, three minutes. Uh, sorry. I think I've spoken just now. I would like to really thank uh, Bursi for giving me, me this opportunity and, and so on. And like uh, what you Kokhin just now mentioned, those who have gone through working in Bursi, the camaraderie and all, the, all that, uh, whatever that they do afterward, I think I think it will have a lot of impact and uh, uh, move them on as well. <laughs> thank you, Bursi. Thank you, Jay. Thomas, you're next. Yeah, uh, thank you. First of all, I think I want to thank the team that uh, came up with this idea of uh, telling the birthday stories, the birthday too. So, Kokin, Lavania, Ashraf, and the, thank, the team, thank you so much for organizing this. Um, we, I think you have heard this term, birthday is a people's move, movement. 
and it is still very much a people's movement. Uh, Brussels is a coalition of, right now, uh, 57 endorsing NGO uh, that is still active in supporting uh, the work of Brussels. And I want to challenge you, the next generation, to take up the mantle. I think the, the struggle for a more democratic Malaysia uh, began many years ago, but I think it took on a new life when Brussels came along. Uh, first, when it was founded by the opposition's uh, politicians and, and civil society members, but then when it became Brussels 2.0 with uh, Dato Ambika and then with Maria, and now us, the, the, the fight, the struggle for a better Malaysia continues. It has not come to the end. But I want to challenge the next generation to take up the mantle, be part of what we are doing. If you believe uh, that Malaysia deserve a better system, uh, come and endorse, be an uh, endorsing an, an NGO with Brussels, come and be part of the steering committee. I am a testament of that. I am, I was during Brussels too, a participant. Never did I dream in a million years that today, 10 years later, I would be the chair of this movement. But I want to say, continue the fight because it won't be ever over and it may not be over because the forces that will try to push you down, that to try to deny you your right will always be there in one form or another. So uh, it's a platform. Let's continue the fight together and we will stand together shoulder to shoulder with all the other movement that is out there. Thank you. Before we move on to Maria and Ambiga, maybe in your closing remarks, you can also uh, share maybe some advice or tips to uh, some of the younger generations of protester, protester and would-be protester, you know, how to keep safe and be aware of their rights and so on. Uh, so Maria, would you like to provide a closing remark? Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, um, I want to thank uh, the committee for actually organizing it. Uh, I forgot to also mention that, you know, behind the um, success of uh, the organizing of uh, Bursay is also the uh, second Secretariat that I have, you know, and it includes people like Sushi, Tammy, who were with us uh, during birthday one, uh, right down to uh, people like um, Mandip and Su Chung and uh, um, who was the name? Zoe. 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 Uh, yeah. Jasmine. And, and uh, who? Jasmine. 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 So many of them. Um, without them, uh, supporting, uh, us, yeah, um, the organizing may not have gone so, uh, so well, uh, and I really um thank them because they have been so brave, uh, and were with us throughout, you know, uh, when we were harassed badly by the police, shot by tear gas and and so forth. I think that you know, uh, moving forward, we really need to focus on. What is at stake now at our in, in our country? Yeah. Um yes, we 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 still would want to have that uh a healthy competition. But you know, um there is also this additional thing. We are fighting an invisible enemy, which is actually the pandemic that we never had ever come across. And I, I feel that, you know, um Looking when I go to my constituencies and all that, uh, we owe it to to them. We really owe it to them that uh, we we have to um, have policies that work. Uh, we have to actually get our leaders to really focus and work together to really resolve this, uh, because human lives are, lives are actually um, dying. Some are brought in dead yeah brought in dead and 
and, and for me, that is ultimate. Uh, that to show that you know our system has actually failed. If we don't uh, unite and actually focus in fighting this pandemic, uh, as well as on rights and so and also for the free and fair elections, but we have additional things to think about, and these are things that I feel we should actually think about um, coming together, particularly the leaders, to see how they can actually work together to resolve what is facing the nation. Yeah, not just about positions and power, but I think that, you know, uh, we, ha we have bigger, bigger issues at stake that we owe it to the people to actually uh, resolve it together. Um, and I think that there's no two way about that. Um, I, I I think I, I, I differ from people, but I think that, you know, we, we have to actually start doing this so that uh, we at least, yeah, uh, our lives or at least the people's lives um, have some kind of sanity and also um, normalcy. Um, well, you know, on a daily basis, they are knocking on my door and many, many uh, MPs' uh, doors to ask for food. I think that that is the ultimate, that we have actually um, not taken um, this, this, this pandemic so seriously or managed it uh, properly in, um, that it actually uh, puts a lot more burden on the people who have actually supported us. So that's my view. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Maria. Uh, Ambiga? Yep. Um, look, thank you, Kok Hin, and, and all of you at Bursi who organized this. Uh, I just got a message from Subra, who was a member of our steering committee, saying he can't believe it's been 10 years since we did Bursi. Uh, but, but what I'd like, I'd like to talk about, because I, I also want to thank our frontliners, okay, and our doctors, our nurses. I want to pray for all those people who are dying, who are sick, because for me, that is priority number one. And where we have failed is we, we don't want uh, uh, leaders. What we want are leaders who are good during the good times, but who are better in a crisis. We don't have that, okay? Actually, we have neither. Uh, so... That is our problem, where the failure is, because people keep saying, look, after all the bursets and all that, we thought we were getting somewhere, you know, but is change going to be possible? Of course, change is possible. The problem is change is not easy. Change takes time. Uh, Thomas has said that, Chin has said that, change takes time. You must never, ever give up. Bad leaders would want you to give up, okay? But we can never give up because... This pandemic has shown us that we have not put the right people there, okay? Uh, of course, Sheraton move is another issue altogether. But the, the problem is leadership. The leadership during this pandemic is so appalling that people are suffering on a daily basis. And that must be our focus, really, uh, from now until the pandemic is over. And I, every time I look at the pictures of the frontliners, I, I really feel like crying. I don't know how we can help but they're putting their lives at stake as well for us. So we need to thank them uh, for actually shouldering the entire burden of this pandemic because our leaders seem to be busy doing other things, okay? So that's one. So at the end of the day, we must accept change is tough, all right? The, 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 the thing is never to give up. And you know where my hope lies? My hope lies in our youth. I'm so impressed with our youth, okay? Uh, look at Parliament Digital and look at the things they're doing because they use social media, they're reaching people. And, and I actually think we can never give up, no matter how old we are, okay? Because evil doesn't stop. So we have to remember that we have a role to play. Berse will always have a role to play. As I say, the role is wider now. It's more pro-democracy. So at the end of the day, I would like to leave this session Again, thanking our frontliners and our poor medical system that is crushed under this, this pandemic uh, while our leaders are busy politicking. Um, and I really, we must support them. And for me, that is our top priority, as Maria said. Uh, and then maybe after the pandemic is over, we get together and see how we can get better leaders. Okay, <laughs> thank you.
Thank you so much to all our speakers uh, for your time and sharing tonight. I think it's wonderful to be able to gather all the key birthday leaders and activists here again, you know, in, in the same uh, room after so long, 10 years. Um, I would like to end the webinar using a quote that actually Jin Hua likes to use, which is that uh, you do not start in the traffic jam. You're not stuck in the traffic jam. You are the traffic jam, right? So similarly, you do not join a rally. You do not join a protest. You are the protest, right? You are the rally. It is the people's movement. Thank you so much to everyone. Although this is the end of the webinar, it's not the end of the uh, campaign to celebrate the 10th anniversary of uh, the 9th of July. Uh, right after this, in fact, we have a clubhouse session with the names mentioned by Maria just now, Ada, Mandi, they are all there right now. Audience, if you are free, just head over there. They are, they are talking about Bursay 709 as well. And please feel free to share your stories through uh, hashtag Kisa Bursay 709. Ataupun Bursay Stories 709. It's all on social media. We want to hear the ordinary stories from ordinary people. Uh, feel free to share them. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a good night. Salam Bursi. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Ambiga. Salam Bursi. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank, you all. Thank you so much. Hido, Hido, Hido. I thought it was Bursi, Bursi. <laughs> 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 <laughs>